For years, I have maintained that spirit communication lies somewhere in a field of audio that humans cannot hear, known as the ultrasonic field. Now, with scientific equipment becoming more and more accessible to people like you and me, I am now on a mission to prove that theory is plausible. And I'm taking you along with me. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Philip Page. Look, uh, you know, for a while now, I've been hearing a lot of rhetoric on YouTube in regards to uh, devices and apps and spirit communication that is supposedly scientifically proven. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've been a little more vocal about that than what I have been in the past, because in the past, I haven't wanted to ruffle any feathers. But the more I hear this, the more that I hear that something is scientifically proven, the more it gets under my skin, because there are some steps that are being missed in regards to the scientific proof. Uh, being able to present a final product does not make something scientifically proven. Showing the steps that you have taken, raising your question, going through multiple testing phases uh, to see if you can repeat the initial claim, and then doing a write-up and then having it published and then having a peer review is all part of being scientifically proven. Making a video and, and showing results and saying it's scientifically proven is not it. That is not scientifically proven. For the past two weeks now, I have been testing and retesting this device. As simple as it may be, I have been testing it. And I have all of the, uh, I have the test videos available. I'm currently writing a paper for it right now for the Parapsychological Association. And just, you know, I wanna show you guys that this isn't just a black box with a couple of knobs on there. That, I mean, there's, there are actual components to this. Yes, they are simple, but there are components to it. The heart of the component is this ultrasonic sensor. Now, what I have done, I believe, shows proof of concept. Now it's time to change that. Now it's time to up it. Now it's time to do better with it, basically. And here's what I have found through using this, through being able to play around with the frequencies uh, and being able to change this to where I can plug this in directly uh, into a, uh, a computer and using audio software like Adobe Audition. Uh, you don't have to use Adobe Audition, this is what I use. I've been able to theorize now that any voices that I'm able to get through this are coming in between 1000 and 2000 hertz right in that area. So what that means is that I think, I feel now that we have an identifiable range once they are recorded through the ultrasonic area. It's able to bring them up into the 1000 to 2000 hertz minus 12 decibels. What I've been noticing through this is for the most part, these voices that, that I'm able to get are either through whisper or through um, at least some sort of softer uh, speech. And the reason why I think that is, is because sound travels on a wave. And when a wave moves through the air, it's actually moving air particles around. And because it's air based, that's why I think Again, I have no proof of this part of it, but I, I feel anyways that that is why in a lot of EVPs especially, we get whispers. And so this is something I'm gonna keep uh, playing around with. Now I did a test recently uh, with a fan, uh, an EM pump basically, mm -hmm. aimed at the sensor. And here's some of what I was able to get with that. Okay, so this is November 29th, 2022 at 10.30 p.m. trying a different 
test. This is Philip Page. Um, trying to see if having the EM pump aimed here. Let me show you. Sorry. Having the EM pumped pump, which is battery operated, aimed into the receiving sensor uh, will make any difference. I last couple of tests haven't haven't gotten any results. So the ultrasonic receiver is plugged in to my microphone preamp. So if I turn it on, we can see that when it picks up sound, we are getting that reading. So, it's going to be recorded on uh, this, I don't know if you can see it, this is Adobe Audition software. And let's go ahead and we'll put this as Test 29. Okay. Let's see if I can aim this to where, in case of the camera is seeing everything, excuse me. Uh, phone just vibrated. phone um, we'll put the phone ringers off put it off to the side okay so I'm going to start recording. is on. Adjusting the volume. This is the frequency. Put about So you should be able to hear that. Is it hard to speak when I'm here? Hard to speak when I'm here? Going to adjust the frequency to twenty five percent. Going to adjust the frequency to twenty five percent. Do you prefer a higher frequency or a lower frequency? Going halfway 
turn the frequency. <laughs> halfway on the frequency are there any spirits who can use this frequency it's a little bit higher This little microphone that's on this should allow us to hear you. One hundred percent. Raising the frequency, 75%. Does the higher frequency help out? Is this something that is this something that we as those who are still in our bodies are even supposed to be doing? <laughs> supposed to be doing? I smell something sweet. <laughs> Is that something here, or is that something else? Now I did a variety of tests without the EM pump, without the full spectrum light, with a ring light instead, and nothing really seemed to give results. However, having the EM pump aimed approximately six inches away from the ultrasonic receiver, that seems to, to allow or help those voices to come through. I think that has to do with two things. One, we are creating air movement, which I believe uh, creates a little bit of a, of a chaotic environment for words to actually form. And two, because of the spinning magnets that are in place, it's creating an energy field. So I think both of those are what's able to uh, help create speech. Now, again, I am in the process right now of writing a paper on this for the Parapsychological Association for the purposes of publication. We will see what happens with that. Okay, so just real quick guys, I found a 3.5 millimeter extension cord. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the hypersonic device, into the microphone part of the camera. That way you can hear how this picks up faint noises. Okay, here we go.
But, so, I, I, I can't express enough, guys, that if somebody says that something has been scientifically proven, ask them, what was their control? What was their test? What was their, what was their overall question that they wanted answered from a, from a scientific test? With me, the question was, is it possible to create EVPs to get voices without the use of an app, without the use of a scanning radio? And are we able to pull voices from the ultrasonic level, basically from an area where we as humans cannot hear? Is that where EVPs lie? And so far, proof of concept seems to be there. So guys, I would welcome your opinion I would welcome um, your thoughts on this. I think we're getting towards a breakthrough in regards to this. Some people are gonna say that we're taking a step back, that there's apps out there where we can hear crystal clear words. And yeah, we can hear crystal clear words. My thing always has been, is that really spirit or does that have to do with the audio bank or the, um, the radio traffic that's coming in from Wi-Fi radio. With this, we're able to now pull voices out from the air. All right, guys, just a quick video. Thank you so much for your time. If you wanna see those test videos, the links are down in the description below, and I will, uh, I'll just talk to you next time. Okay, guys, take care, bye-bye.